Welcome back to She Got Game, a celebration of women in gaming. I am Chelsea Castorius. I'm a sophomore of multimedia major and, and, and the inaugural president of the Morgan State Esports Program. Hello, my name is Ashlyn. I'm a junior multimedia journalism major. And if you haven't seen our first She Got Game, a celebration of women in gaming conversation with community creative director Karima Winter, then make sure you watch the replay via the Morgan State University Esports YouTube channel. For those who are watching for the first time, the She Got Game, a celebration of women in gaming conversation series was created to highlight the phenomenal women who are doing amazing things in the gaming industry and provide information on many ways that people can enter into the gaming industry. Now we hope you are all excited to hear from this week's guest as much as we are. Please meet the co-founder of the Game Hers and 45 Lemons, Miss Verda Maloney. We're so glad to have you here. Welcome. Yes, hey welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. This is like, I've been looking forward to talking to you all. So I'm super, super amped. All right. We look forward to talking to you too. So um, just a little bit about who you are. If you could just explain who you are and what you do too. Yeah, so um, my name is Verda Maloney, pronouns are she, her, and I am the co-founder and chief innovation officer at The Game Hers. We are a media platform that elevates, amplifies. We are a for-profit and for-purpose company to ensure that women and femme-identifying gamers um, are engaged in the space. And so from esports to cosplayers to streamers, we really are about elevating and amplifying all of them. And my role has tr transitioned. I was very involved with community and I still am because we have such a large community. Um, and now I am looking at innovation and growth for our company and looking into kind of the things that are on the horizon. And uh, my other company is called 45 Lemons. And they kind of came together in a beautiful synergy where I spend a lot of time with organizations and companies doing anti-racism and anti-oppression work. That's amazing because, you know, women in gaming and like any in industry, like their voices aren't really as heard. So it's mm -hmm. good. To, um, it's really exciting to see you being a part of something this big and yeah. trying to push it forward. Yeah. So I would want to ask further more, like what, what got you into the gaming industry in specific? Right. And what was like what was it like in the beginning like your first steps into this journey so one it's exciting to be on camera with you all right seeing like from college up that we are here we've always been here i think some people have a misconception that gaming like they have that stereotypical thing in their mind of who a gamer is right and if you go back and look like in his historically games started to be targeted towards boys just because they wanted to market to a group and kind of make money. But around that time, 70s, 80s, it was around when if you would go into a clothing store and you went in the kids section, all the clothes would be together. It wouldn't be like pink over here and blue over here. And so marketers decided, hey, we want to like sell more, let's market. And that's kind of how we started seeing marketing of games, the Game Boy specifically, to boys. That said, at that time, women were so engaged engaged with game development, with gameplay. They were doing so many things, um, but that marketing made it separate. And so for me, um, I just want everyone to know we've always been here. We make up half the earth, um, girls and women, we play games um, and do so well. And, and studies show that we don't do it at any rate lower than men. It's just that all that toxic stuff gets in the way sometimes. And so that was what prompted me to want to be one of the co-founders of The Game Hers, is that we just want to make sure that people know and understand and make space for. And if they're not going to make space for us, we're going to make our own for women in the industry. My kind of getting into the industry, if you had asked me, three, five, 10 years ago, that would I be doing this? I would be like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Because for my whole life, I kind of just considered myself gaming adjacent. Like I would play, but more so like watch people. I'm older than y'all. So it was like arcades at the beach or just an arcade around the block playing Pac-Man or watching people play those games. Um, you know, Tetris, things like that. But games in my life are that my family played games, not necessarily video games, but board games and like all of those things. And then as I got older, I played some games with my children. They both they both gamed and my son still games a lot from the time they were little, from the time they were two. I was like, we were that household where it was like, why not? It's like a fun thing to do and they're good at it. Let them play. And I would play with their dad. And I didn't, and I'm not competitive in that sense. I'm a competitive person, but was not like, ooh, I'm gonna be on an esports team. Or what have you. It was just for fun. And entering the space is that you don't have to be a competitive gamer in order to join an esports team, an esports club, or a gaming club. Um, you just have to have kind of a love for games. 
games and game gaming want to like open your mind and me entering was because all of my work is around community building and that's kind of like a passion for me creating spaces where those that the system will historically marginalize can be their full authentic selves and have fun and have a part of what this industry is all about and so um, me entering was so that I'm a black woman. Um, I wanted black girls. I wanted all people to see that we are here and we can be here, right? And that we deserve to be here um, and just like create and make space. And it brought my worlds together, working on anti-oppression and people and their stories and then gaming. It's all about stories. It's supposed to be all about fun and you should be a part of that. So that's a lot of words to answer your question. And I hope that I answered it perfectly because you know it's not very common in like a household that your mom accepts that you're playing video games or her telling you let's go play this game like <laughs> it's the same thing for me like usually um my mom only let my brother play the games or like specific types of games so whenever he would play something i would just sit in the back and just watch like trying to like peek over <laughs> over his shoulder <laughs> so it's amazing that you do that just backseat gave him a little bit <laughs> that's a really mm -hmm. amazing that you you welcome that in your household yeah. yeah um and you said something that really resonated with me you said if the industry is not going to create spaces for women then we'll create spaces for ourselves so um just to ask you so for those who aren't familiar with gender and race and discrimination that take place in the gaming space can you please just share some of your experiences so that the public can become informed yeah i mean i think i've been fortunate but also because i generally just play with friends so i'm not it's very rare that you're going to find me just to go into a random lobby right um but one statistic is that approximately 56 percent of um, gamers who identify as a woman or female identifying will turn off their comms when they are playing games because they don't want other people to hear that they are or sound like what we might typically think a, a woman or girl sounds like because of the toxic stuff that's going to happen, right? So that's on the gender um, gender front, right? That most women don't want to get into that because they're going to hear things. I'll, I'll say that the, the, the kinder things like, oh my gosh, go make a sandwich. Or are you playing with your boyfriend? Or um, do you want to go out on a date? Like if I did, then I'd go on a dating app. Like I'm here to play this game, right? So that's the experience. And that's, I'm, I'm giving like kind of a kinder version, but a lot of women experience that. And then, um, gen, you know, that's the gender aspect of it. And then from a race perspective, I don't even know if we have enough stats that talk about the racism that exists, the, the just the racial slurs that people will just say out of their mouths and things like that. And those are some of the things that I think are really important for us to know, that it is happening. Believe people when they tell you. And how do we change that, right? I think that gaming is just, it is like most things, a reflection of the society that we live in. But it has an opportunity to not be that because technically behind a screen with my, with my, with my console or my PC or my phone, nothing else should really matter except for how well I play, right? But there's things that are that are coming up in that. And so I have to say that I've actually had generally a really good experience. And some of it is because I've, one, come into a space and created a community where, so I play with like people in our community, our ambassadors, like different people. So I play with people who already know we're not tolerating that here. And I think the other thing is um, that I... I think because I'm starting a company, the times where I experience it is that people don't always believe me when I tell them the experiences of gamers and particularly men. They're like, well, I don't think that's true. When I game, I don't hear that. Or when we say statistics like upwards of 50% of gamers uh, are women, that's not true. I've never seen a, I play Apex and I've never played with a girl. And I'm like, kind of like, how would you even know? Like technically. How would you even know? Um, and so those are the moments where it's like kind of going for funding and people thinking that we're a nonprofit when I'm like, no, we actually want to put money in the hands of women. That's why we are a for-profit. Most of our staff, like almost like 90 something percent, we like are women um, or non-binary folks. Like we just want to make sure that we have, we're making and generating revenue because that's also how we can make a, make a change and stake in this industry. Um, again, you'll let me know if I don't answer any questions because I can be, I can be verbose. <laughs> no, it's under, no, like, honestly, like the way you're expressing, like how you're feeling and especially how, what you've experienced during in the community itself, it's really, it does answer our questions because it's not, it's just, it doesn't only happen to, um, people of color. It happens to like, and women in gaming, it happens everywhere in any type of workspace. And even when you, when you were saying that 
um, sometimes people don't turn on comms. I personally don't turn on comms sometimes because of stuff like that. Or if I'm playing with some friends, they're like, wait, we're going to test it, like test out the waters and see how these like how these randoms are going to be. And if they say if they say something that's probably off, then we're going to tell you to like try Not to joy. stay back. Yeah. yeah. And like or even some people I know some people use gamer tags that don't make them see appear as a girl. So I feel like that's another thing that um, it's I feel like it's very scary (laughs) kind of being a woman in gaming. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 not it's not okay, Right. And it's kind of like and I also believe that it shouldn't be on us solely to solve it, quite frankly. Right. It's about, you know, that's like a great thing that you're saying, like you have a crew that you go in with and they're like, let's test this water out for you. Right. Let's make sure that they they want you to feel as safe as you need to be in order to join in and more very specifically more men need to do that right and like more you know they just need to do that they need to create that and and be a voice for that space so that we don't have to be burdened with it what i said before about the fact that um you know there's a lot of research um that has been done that say, that just proves that there's no gender difference in ability of gameplay what that but the thing that does happen is that all the things that are going on in our minds impact our gameplay. So if I have to think about, oh gosh, is somebody going to say something or somebody does say something, it's hard to keep playing like at your best. And it's not about, oh, you got to toughen up or that's just the game, da, 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 like that's what you signed up for. Absolutely not. If you're poking fun at me because of things that are about who I am as a human, then no, like game over. That's not what it's supposed to be like. You can't make fun of things that are physical about me or things that are just about how, you know, my sexual orientation, all that stuff. That's not okay. You can say that I played the game terribly, right? You can razz me about something that I might have done that like made us lose. But when it has to get to like personal and to identity, that's not acceptable. And we need more people um, saying that, like while in play, that's not acceptable, right? Um, so, yeah, I settle a lot of words again. No, no, that was beautiful. And I think it's just a shame that, you know, we live in a world where gender is just such is such a heavy role in how we play games. Um, but I do want to know um, more about the game hers. So could you yeah. tell me just about that? And then what is some of the work that you're doing? Yeah. So um, like I said, make your own table and if you if you can and that you know and that's kind of a part of what we're doing on the like we stand on the shoulders of some like dope organizations that have come before us and that are still out there black girl gamers um there's um wiggy there's latinx and gaming there's all of these like dope dope organizations that have existed um there's like Keisha Howard over at Sugar Gamers, like been around for like a hot minute, y'all. And I've been really, really doing so many amazing things. And so we just, you know, entering into that, I always want to say it's not, we're not like, we, you know, it's just us. Like, no, um, the things that we are focused on, um, we created the Gamers Awards two years ago. We're going into our third round of that, where we wanted to create an award show that was about elevating and amplifying women and femme identifying folks within the industry. And we have like 35 awards that range all the way from streamer of the year to game dev of the year to most inclusive organization, um, uh, journalists. Like we want people to like know that in all of these places within the industry, there are amazing people um, women and femme identifying folks doing dope things. Right. And we all know like the face of it and you see certain award shows and you're like, really? You're, there are no women here. And then on top of it, I'm like, really, you think there's no black women doing this stuff. Right. And so wanting to like create a space for that. So that's one huge thing that's coming up in the fall. We're super excited about it. We're about to do a professional boot camp. This is our second year or our third year. I can't remember of doing our professional boot camp during the pandemic. We launched in March of 2020 and it was during the, um, the height of the pandemic that is COVID. And a lot of people in our discord were just talking about jobs, losing jobs, wanting to break into the gaming industry. And so we just created um, a weekend event that's like really, really grown into helping people get into the industry because people, it's like any industry. And if we were to think of traditional sports, you have an NFL team, the everything, the players are not the only thing that make that, you know, make that engine work. There's all of the things. There's the journalists, there's the HR department, there are the artists, there are um, the lawyers. Like if you love gaming 
and you not necessarily want to be on an esports team as a player, there are so many things that you could do in the industry that keep you engaged with something that you just like really love, but also with other passions in your life. So we have our professional boot camp coming up and we have a collegiate program that we've literally just um, launched officially this month um, where we are signing on. We have different um, colleges and universities just signed to be a partner with us. We have a discord. We will offer internships. And one of the things that has happened already, some of the like very preliminary data is just by being affiliated with us as the gamers. And you have to sign a code of conduct um, that kind of says that this is how you and your team are going to rock. And we see more um, one campus. We saw like about 30 percent more um girls um, and women and femme identifying folks joined the game, joined the esports team knowing that they were also affiliated with and had signed the, co the code of conduct of the gamers. So those are some like, and we have an app. That's the other thing, which is so amazing and so dope, which is just like a place for you to just like bring all your things. One of the things that I think sometimes happens for me at least is I have a lot of things that I love. I love my pets. I love photography. I love gaming. And sometimes you'd be in spaces and people are like, why are you talking about that? That's not what we're here to talk about. Like you only, why only have to talk about the game? And so we have an app where you could talk about all these other things in your life and also be like, hey, do you want to play Apex? Or hey, do you want to, you know, Stardew Valley? Like whatever it is. So um, those are a couple of the major things that we have going on right now. Awesome. That's really great. So what is the app called? It's just called the Gamers app. Like we kept it super simple. <laughs> Got you, got you. <laughs> it's for um, um, iPhone and Android, um, but only available in the U.S. and in Canada right now. Awesome, awesome. That's good. All right. So you also mentioned that you were the co-founder for Forty Five Lemons. Can you tell us more about it and how it began? So, me and my best friend that I met my freshman year in college um, started this company together. Where we, um, she. She doesn't ever want to be out in the public or whatever. She's this dope, amazing, brilliant Black woman in the world. And she's done all of these amazing things in human resources. And I've been doing so many things with anti-oppression. And so we brought our worlds together and we actually help organizations really understand their stories as individuals and become more practiced about talking about race and other identities in the workplace so that they can create work environments that are um, inclusive and anti-oppressive. And we work in lots of industries. We work in the theater industry, banks and finance, um, health industry, and education. And I've been all over the country doing this work for about, I mean, Officially five years, we came together five years ago and then like LLC'd ourselves about two years ago in, um, and officially like kind of launched that. And the thing that I'll say to everyone listening um, and particularly those of you that are in college is that it's never too late to kind of do the things that you've always wanted to do. Um, but understand right now that the things that you're passionate about, because I was passionate about all these things in college. I was the president of Black Student Alliance. If there was a protest to go to, I was at it. Um, I was a teacher and an educator um, and always thinking about how to bring like all these worlds together um, that you can. Just stay focused on the things that you really love and try to find the, um, the professional outlets to like make it happen. So um, that's a little bit about what I do at 45 Lemons. That's awesome. I appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, so how does 45 Lemons ensure the voice of the community is being heard? So I think the main thing is that we don't, we're not cookie cutter. So it's not like, oh, here's a set of like trainings that you can do and then check off a box. We really go into companies and organizations and figure out what's happening for them. We talk to their employees. We talk to their people. Sometimes we just talk to the Black folks because we're like, what's up in here? Sometimes we're just, you know what I mean? Or like, we're like, let's get this group of women together because something's coming up about that. I think in any situation, if you are, um, if your goal is to support and help anyone, you must center them first. And in centering them, that means that you might have to decenter yourself. It means that you might have to then be talking to them and asking them. And part of that is not thinking that you have all of the answers. I know a lot of things about, you know, a few things, and I do know my area of expertise. And at the same time, what that means for one organization may not be exactly how it looks for another. So we do a lot of listening. Um, a lot of question asking um, before we just jump in and say, this is what you should do. But one thread, I have a pandemic puppy. So if you hear a dog in the background, that's Murphy. Um, one thing that we really, one thing that we do across the board though is, hold on. 
is um, help people share their stories. Um, and so we do something where they they write um, a race-based identity autobiography, a core motivator, and we share that with people because one of the things around race, racism, um, oppression, is that we as a country in the United States are not very practiced at having these conversations. We don't talk about it enough. And if you don't talk about it enough, you can't really act on it. Um, and so we always start with the local being you as an individual. So what's my story? Verda comes into a room and I have my whole story. And then what's Ashlyn's story? What is Chelsea's story? And like, what does that mean for how we are gonna work together? Um, and we share that because sharing parts of yourself is just like a really important thing just in life. Um, so that's a little bit of what we do. That is, um, <laughs> I know we keep saying that is really beautiful because it really is. Because not a lot of um, companies or industries do that. Like they check in on like, you know, workers' mental health or their, even their own interests. Like they're mainly focused on their, what their company is doing and what their end goal is. And I, I really, I really, that make that gives me hope, I would say. It gives me hope for um, women in gaming and even anybody else who's interested, not even just playing the game, but you know, marketing and then doing the artwork for certain things. It's well, y'all really... give me hope. I have to say that. <laughs> I think that, like, I really think that um, your generation um, is really pushing to make sure that we are no longer just about bottom lines. We're not just about, oh, how do I make a bunch of money? I mean, I think it's important, obviously, to have wealth and to have to have wealth not being like billions of dollars, but you need financial independence. That's what I'm going to say, financial independence and freedom. Um, and at the same time, how do we do this in ways that make sure that this planet will still exist, make sure that people actually are kinder to each other um, and, uh, and, and uh, more compassionate? And I feel like your generation is all about that. So I actually am inspired by you all. Well, thank you for that. Um, moving on to the next question. So what is one thing that you are hopeful for in this next generation? You kind of touched on it just a little bit, um, but just a woman <laughs> in gaming and then also just sharing stories about minority communities. Yeah. So I, I think that the inspiring thing is um, one, like even just seeing both of you being the journalists for, and you, you know, Chelsea, I think you said you're like the inaugural president of your, is that what you said of the esports team? That's, I'm not going to curse, but insert curse word. Awesome. Like, come on, like, come through the way through. Like, and those are the things, right? Like, you're literally showing up in this way and taking on that role right now. Because one of the things about joining and leading when you are in college, but particularly when it comes to esports and gaming, is that this is an entryway into other pathways. This is an entry into STEM careers. You might work in a tech company. You might, like all of these things. So that, I have a lot of hope for that because I see a lot of young women. I see a lot of young non-binary folks like actually stepping into these roles, even though it's hard because you're going to be in a room full of people that maybe don't look exactly like you. So that, that gives me a lot of hope. The other thing that gives me a lot of hope is that I think that as, um, as individuals that are very, um, you know, you grew up with technology that I did not grow up with, right? You have the internet, you have social media, you have all of these things and really watching your generation figure out how to use that um, for just causes is inspiring to me, right? Um, and I think I'm hopeful for that, right? There's a caution to it, obviously, but there's a caution to everything, in my opinion. I mean, look, half the time, I'm just like, I'm sure y'all are like, look, y'all talking to us about this social media, look at this planet, like, what's up, y'all? That's how I would feel, because I'm just like, yo, right? Like, yeah, I get it. You can come on my phone too much, but, but come on. Like, can somebody stop those pipelines? Can somebody stop, like, whatever, right? So whole other conversation, right? Um, so those are some things that I'm hopeful for. I think that there was a second part to the question, but I don't remember what the second part was. Things that I'm hopeful for with your generation. And there was another question. Was there? Uh, right. Um, and so I... Um, I definitely, so one thing that I will, you'll always hear me say things like groups that the system historically marginalizes, or I would use like, I just feel like we are not a minority. Like when we look at it globally, like we actually take up like black, brown, indigenous, folks of color, cultures of, you know, like all of that, we're, we're like predominant in the globe. Um, we might, you know, as African Americans or as black folks, we might make up like something like 13.6% of the United States. That said, um, we are the, the system is the one that makes that whole minority thing true. So I say that um, as 
for groups that the system historically marginalizes, like those experiences, they mirror the experiences of the world in the gaming industry. Like that's just, that's just true. Meaning that we don't see ourselves in our faces as, as, um, really strong, um, complex playable characters as much. That's changing, right? And how that changes is by having multiple voices in a room when you're developing a game, right? And we see some of that happening, right? Like part of why people, I think it's, um, it's not, is it Apex? One, one of the games recently was like considered one of the most, it's not Apex, it's, um, Valorant? It, actually, I think Apex did win an award for being like one of the most diverse games, like a really inclusive because of the characters. Like those play, those characters didn't exist like, you know, five years ago where you would go on and you would see like different cultures and different, like just different characters in that way. So that's one thing. Um, and I think that our experience within the industry is one that has been silenced for so long. And when I said before about just believe people when they tell you their lived experience, like just believe them, believe what they're telling you, believe that that's what it's like for them when they're playing games, believe that that's what it's like when they go for an internship and they're like, well, how come I didn't get it? But I know this person who is, you know, a white man who seemed to get the job, but didn't, wasn't as qualified for me as me. That's because the system is still playing that out. And how we counter that, how we work through that is by continuing to share our stories and acknowledging it, but then surrounding yourself with people that are going to help us like break that, break that norm. Like, so even what you, you know, I'm going to go back to what you said about when you're gaming, that community that you've created there will be the community that can help make a change and make a difference in what's going to happen for groups that the system and that the gaming industry historically marginalizes. Um, and yeah, those are the, the couple of things that I'm going to say on that topic. Um, what I will, but the other thing I want to keep saying, like, I think of all the people that I've connected with over the past two years and beyond, like Melanin Gamers, Maya Mata, like out of the UK, these organizations that are about like, like black people or people of color, um, indigenous folks are really in this. It's just that we're not the ones that you're seeing the face of all the time. So that's what I'm going to say. Like, just keep showing up and showing out because <laughs> we are there. <laughs> I love that. And I think part of the reason why I chose like journalism is just for that fact that there are stories that need to be told that are just hidden under the rocks and nobody ever really hears about. So I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to toss it to you. Yeah, <laughs> it's like like she was saying, it's very you give a, like a very much expi like ah, I'm so sorry. It's <laughs> don't be you, sorry. <laughs> it's like everything you said is very inspiring and like, you know, you have a lot of like words of like wisdom i guess yeah. words of wisdom. <laughs> so it's like it gives you like like it gives us an extra spark of hope of what we're able to do yeah. or anybody else is able to do and you know as we come to conclude the interview would you like to let everybody and anybody else know what the game hers and what 45 lemons has coming up and how people can find you online all right so um the game hers like i said we have our professional boot camp coming up um april 29th through may 1st and so we'll start to share that go to all of our socials it's the game hers t-h-e-g-a-m-e-h-e-r-s um across all platforms so you can find us in all those places so we have that coming up and you can go to our website to download our app or to join our collegiate program um and then 45 lemons we don't have anything coming up we're just like you know get at us 45 lemons.com if you actually want your organization to um be um um, anti-racist um, and anti-oppressive space. We are here to help and support you in that. And then I'm Verda. If you just type Verda into anything, because there's so few of us in the world. And if you don't see anything, because there's some companies named Verda, which is so weird, just type the M and I'll show up. I'm like at Verda in all of the places. Um, uh, yeah. And literally even like my gamer tag is Verda Love. So it's like really hard to like not even find me. So um, <laughs> at Verda or at Verda Maloney. Yeah. Yes, awesome. Thank you, Ms. Maloney, for your time. We appreciate your willingness to talk to us. And we are so excited to see all the amazing things that you will accomplish in the future. And again, thank you all for watching this week's She Got Game, a celebration of women in gaming conversation with the Game Hearst co-founder, Ms. Verda Maloney. You can stay up to date with the Morgan State Esports ah, Morgan State University Esports program by following our MS at MSU Bears Esports on Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. You can also subscribe to our YouTube page where you can find where you can find and watch this replay of this interview. You can also connect with me at 
at Champagne Ch dot Chose on Instagram with two S's, <laughs> and, or you could you can message me through the, or you can find me at through the um, MSU Esports um, Instagram page. And I hope to see, I hope you guys enjoyed today. And thank you again, Miss Maloney. It's been a great pleasure to talk to you. Highlight of my day. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So you guys can find me at Ashlyn J Wilson underscore on Instagram. Um, and again, thank you all for watching. And remember.